Okay, right there, that's the name of the of the company where I bought my solar cells. Uh, you can find them on eBay. And just do a search for uh, 3x6 solar cells on eBay and uh, Everbright should come up. Either that or you, you know, maybe just do a, a, a search for Everbright and you can find uh, the Everbright store online. A good place to get your stuff. When you buy the solar cells, you can buy that with a uh, flex pan, solder, and the uh, wire that you would need for uh, solar cells. They don't call it wire, they call it something else. It's flat metal, it's conductive, so I call it wire. It's not wire. <coughs> okay, these two items, once you, uh, you're going to have to um, have the wires connect to something and then you have to um, have the wires go out to your batteries. So I bought these at electronic stores. Simply screw these to the back of your uh, solar panel and then you have your way of connecting the uh, panels, solar cells to this, and then from there it goes to your battery. Um, simple thing to buy. And then I bought what I showed you early in the video. These are, are solar cells that, that were busted when I, when I bought them. Uh, they give you 10 extra solar cells. I bought 100 and they give you 10 extra. So you're going to make some mistakes. They give you the 10 extra so you can learn how to solder which is a good thing okay you can see how these were like this and then it snapped in two from pressure they're very very fragile you can't solder without a flux pen the flux pen is the chemical thing that allows you to solder your, your cells together this side is the uh, negative side the bottom side right there is the positive side okay every time you uh, solder you take your flux pen and simply in the white little square area, don't get in the gray because it comes off, put some flux on there. Take your wire that I pre-cut to size. I have the length measured out right here. I measured them all the same. And then I sliced them with a pair of scissors. It's that easy. Not very hard at all. Okay. You can, these usually may be bent. So they're just not laying flat. You need to flatten them out a little bit. So that you get your nice... Get them in the air, get them where they're looking flat. You may have to work at it a little bit, but once you get it there, you simply put this onto your onto your flexed area, line it up the way you want it. Take your uh, preheated solar iron or I mean uh, soldering iron, and take your silver solder. It comes with the package and do your solders. It's very easy. Okay, that, that, that easy. I just got three nice solders. Very easy. Okay, I just did the positive side. Now what I'll do is I'll take and flip these back over, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, the way I want it. Okay? The next one is after the positive side is the negative side, which is the top portion. Once again, you take your soldering pan, you're going to solder along this entire white area. So basically, whether it's back or front, you're taking your solar panel and you're putting flux. I didn't have very much flux on there. You can see uh, when it changes color to a slight yellow that you have flux on there. Otherwise, you can't see it and, it, and you might not have enough flux on there. Okay, I line it up the way I want it. Okay, now I have these all pre-cut to the right length. So if I line up these wires perfectly, I have the, the same distance between each cell. Okay, you just got to watch out for uh, slippage. Okay, and I can't stress enough that between every time you solder, whether it's got, every time you go to put this iron, in the holder or put it down to clean the uh, iron. Okay, I always go the length. See that? Nice clean solder. I always go the length that, that I'm going in. Okay, now it, it may feel weird to go the way I just did it because I'm doing it backwards from the way I normally do it. 
but that's all there is to it. You'll see me do uh, one cell, uh, but it, each cell is uh, half a volt. You get 18 of these cells together, or 36 of these cells. If you have 36 solar cells put together, you're going to have an 18 volt solar panel. Okay. Uh, these are rated at about 1.7 amps if I have all uh, 18 in series and you have to do it so it's always going to be the positive side to the negative side to the positive side to the negative side so that they're all in series because if I went here to top that's positive positive that's that's not gonna that's not gonna be what you want okay so it's always top to bottom top to bottom top to bottom and you're gonna go all the way up come over come all the way back down come over and come all the way up okay and then you're gonna have either a negative and a positive depending on which way it's, it's sitting you're gonna have your negative and positive opposite ends okay and then if you uh, wire your cells together to be wired together in the same fashion where uh, in series or parallel I, I'm not going to go into parallel. I don't want to go into that. You can look it up on the internet how to wire batteries together, uh, and they'll have in series and parallel, and do it the way you need it, depending on the kind of light you have and the type of situation that you're working in. So, in a nutshell, that's all there is to it. These tools come in handy. I would recommend that. I would recommend different tips depending on on whatever you're doing. I use a flat tip for soldering flat wire. That kind of makes sense, right? If I was doing a circuit board, I'd probably have a pointy tip because I need a very small area that I'm soldering. I'm not an expert, uh, but I followed the directions on somebody else's stuff. They said, well, you're going to tend the wire, and then you put it on there, and then you run it uh, with the flux underneath, and, and it works real well. The problem with, I found out with that is that I'd get too much um, solder on the, on the whole thing it was just a, it was more of a mess and then I, it was hard to take off uh, you have to take your time let the heat heat up the wire use this tool to take the wire like this okay you're going to slide the wire thing up here you could you can rotate it a little bit so you have some grip and then you heat it and as you heat it you'll pull up on the wire and then You'll run the iron backwards, and at the same time you pull up on this, and as it, it'll just pull the wire right up off the top. But you got to take your time. You got to, you got to, you don't want to uh, put any pressure on these. They're very fragile. If you put too much pressure on it, you'll just snap it. Um, and then last but not least, when I put these solar cells in, all I did was I put some silicone in the center of each one. Okay. I, I put the first one down where I wanted it, and then I started laying these down. And once you lay it down, it's not the end of it because just because you got a little bit of uh, silicone on the bottom doesn't mean you can't move these around to line them up. And that's the way I did it. Now, once once you get it down and you let it sit overnight, well, now you're dry and you can't pull them up without breaking them. Uh, if you do break a cell, just break it off. Use your soldering iron, uh, take the wire off. You may have to, to actually ruin a, a second cell, but once you've done that, you could replace those two cells in your solar uh, panel without having to redo all the work. And uh, the way I design mine is I have two layers. I have the bottom layer, and then on top I have another layer of uh, paper type material. It's a, it's a synthetic man-made material. It's a quarter inch thick. And uh, it just sits on top the bottom layer. Then I have glass going on top. So if something happens, I take, simply take the glass out, cut the wires from below, or disengage the wires from below, and I can pull the whole panel up. I could resolder the wires on top to reconnect it, or solder a wire to it to reconnect it, and I could use that whole section over again to make a new solar cell in case the frame rolls.